I'm coming at you with a massive attack. I'll leave you flat on your back. Smack you with my mind attack. Go fall to pop, snap, and crack. Oh, this is a blitz creek, son. Sit down, I already won. Punishment has to be gone. Just let me reload my gun up once. It's time to get off my pitch. Here I can help you with this. My shadow friend got a shiv. And he likes when you resist. Time to be quiet, don't snitch. I love the thrill of the risk. On day I spin like a disc. You know what deep in your soul. It's that every dollar you own. It's Man, this boy's out of control. It's you got some dice to roll. You know what deep in your soul. It's that every dollar you own. It's Man, this boy's out of control. It's some dice to roll. All right, all right. Couple minutes early here, so we're gonna take a look at the teams. Let me pull up Rebel.net. We're gonna look at it on the website just so I don't accidentally spoil anything. So Gonna have some Norse versus some um, Nurgle. So we got Ice Jugglers back here, played by Gare Bear. About 1700 TV. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, basically that. Got a really good Yeti. Nickel Dolph, some good skills. A Palm Dauntless Berserker. Tackle. Solid Runner. Strength Up Lineman. Dirty player. And against Gary Bear is Captain Coconut with Christmas Rejects. We've got a rookie Nurgle Warrior. Uh, the most disgusting beast of Nurgle I've ever seen. And a uh, bunch of just solid development. A couple stat ups on some Pestigores. A Guard Rotter. Russell Rotter. Pretty. Pretty standard fare. 2K TV coming in. Uh, only one claw. So, Christmas rejects aren't as killy as uh, most 2000 TV Nurgle. Double guard as well. <laughs> it's only an ogre with guard tentacles. <laughs> Ugh. You're not... You're not right, but you're not too far off base. Yeah, let's see. This should be about 300 TV in inducements plus 1K bank, 100 bank. Um, I feel like we might see an Ice Pelt here. The, uh, the Yeti star player. Just this for the strength advantage and extra mans. Or we could see Double Babe and a Napo. That's another possibility. Just be really hard to attrition that way. So what do we got? We got four players. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve players? Double Babe and Apple would be really good. Wizard Babes. Wizard Babes Boomer. That's also another one, yeah. I, I really like Boomer for... You just buy him and put him on the line of scrimmage. I really... I think that's a great play. That uh, game's still not up yet. Now, I wonder, is there any piece that's going to cause greed plays this game? This Beast of Nurgle is going to take a lot of hits. It might be able to level. If you level the Beast of Nurgle, what do you even give it? Like, let's say you roll a normal. What do you even get? Um, You could go Jugs, I guess, but it's not very good. You could go Grab. You could go Grab. That's what it is. It's like the only skill left for the Beast of Nurgle, I think. No, not on the Nurgle Warrior. On on the uh, Beast of Nurgle. But Nurgle Warrior? Yeah, definitely stand firm. Uh, or you could go guard on the Cl Claw Mighty Blow. Uh... And there's a Pestigore that's about to get Claw if it gets 5 SPP this game. Break Tackle? Yeah, Break Tackle's not bad. I don't hate Break Tackle. And they should be getting into inducements here soon. Keep hitting the button. It doesn't pop anything up. And 
And actually, um, let's see, is that my button? Yeah, okay. Let me check a thing real quick. That is what I have forgot. And... Yeah, um, when, once you get to a certain point in, into the strength category, it gets a little, a little wonky for sure. Gonna set up a prediction. When, interval, or horse. Set that at a 20 minute bet. I, I, yeah, I think really the only thing left at this point for the Nurgle is just, uh, for the Beast of Nurgle is a grab, I think. After, if, and if you ever get to Legend, you're just hoping for, hoping for a double. You get Blodge, then you have a Blodge Firm Beast of Nurgle with Pro. And, you know, I knew there was a reason I never started, uh, I don't start early when looking at games. Like, because I know I, I casted, uh, the first season I ever did casting, I casted a game ten minutes early once, and then they started five minutes late. And that was awful. So then I started, like, getting on a stream five minutes early. And that was okay. You usually had enough to say by then. But then I, at one point, I just started casting them two minutes before the match was supposed to start. And that usually worked out much better. Because you don't just end up sitting here clicking the refresh button. Just because, like, sometimes the inducements take a while. Because you, if, if you're like me, you, you get into the inducements, and if you're the overdog. You look at the opponent's team for about a minute, figure out if you're going to go on offense or defense. Then you click the button, and then your opponent, who's uh, been patiently waiting for you to figure out what you're doing, takes a minute to figure out what inducements they want. Ugh, I'm going to need a cough top. And this is the part where I double check that I am, in fact, um, using the right time zone. I think I am. Yeah, it's on the schedule. It should be starting here any second. And there is another game starting right now, so... So that, that's the other game. It's just starting. I'm going to put up a, the spoiler filter real quick. Just in case, like, some some silliness happens and that <laughs> that match gets a point on, like, turn one. I wouldn't want one to have spoiled that. Do, 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 do. Always remember, never start early. Start late. Make baseless speculation during the loading screen. One vote for the Nurgle. Can I can get behind that? Let's see, 
Okay. Ugh. Now, I'm also against 2000 TV Nurgle. Coming up, uh, tomorrow. But my Nurgle are not nearly as cuddly as coconuts. Gonna have, like... Eight Mighty Blow to go against, and two Palmers, one with Claw, one with Tackle. It's gonna make me sad. I get a little bit of that cash money. <laughs> I can get behind that. I can get behind that. I'm assuming you're against the uh, the winner then. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Think so. I believe that. Not. Not super familiar with the bracket. I haven't looked at it in a, a week and a half. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Get the spoiler logo off the screen. There we go. See what inducements we got, because there's a lot of way that a lot of ways the Norse could go with uh, 400 k to work with. Uh, One hundred of that being in the bank, though. Okay, we got a Cheney. What else do we get? Cheney and a couple rookies were bought, it looks like. Or a rookie was bought. <clears throat> we got Coconut going on defense. Setting up as a boat. Putting a Pestigore on the line. Which, uh, that's fine if you want all your Pestigores. Um, I can understand not wanting to bench the ball carrier, because that's... This Nurkle team's actually able to turn over. Well, I think it's, uh, he's forced to put it on the line of scrimmage is the thing. Because you, you don't want to put the Chaos Warriors on the line. Uh, you could put the Beast of Nurgle on the line. That is one way you could go. Like, Beast of Nurgle would take off the Pestigore over a Rotter. The only real way you would get another Rotter on the line of scrimmage is if you take out the Agility 4. Yeah, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Pitch invasion, nice and spicy right off the bat. Pestigore safe. <laughs> Ball almost went into the runner's hand as well. Holy cow, what a start. So, uh, which side of the pitch do you think we're going down? See, this is three to five. Immediate claw removal. Cheney. Piling on into a stun. And now you had to protect Cheney here as well. 
Okay, that's better. This goes right there. Tie that up. You know, actually, Cheney's got regen. Cheney is the star player that you want to remove him from the pitch, but taking hits on him can also feel like a waste just because of regen. Uh, like, I think most regen star players are just insanely efficient. So now the Nurgle have a couple players to work with. Definitely want to take Mighty Blow hit. Just take a nice little hit on the Lino. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Hitting star players is great. Remove them from the pitch. Get rid of that inducement money. Hey, Bobsicle. Yeah, we, we had a very spicy uh, pitch invasion. Here to start us off. Um, how do you even position uh, four players here? Yeah, KO and never come back is also good. That is a fact. Um, it's rough for one of them, but it also avoided a Claw Mighty Blow hit on a Pestigore for the Nurgle. And right now, the Norse are going to be able to come pressure up this side. I'm surprised they didn't set up a decent, uh, decent Dirty Player kick. Go ahead and foul this Pestigor, maybe. And it's hard to take a piling on hit here. Like you, you could take a you could take a two die one die. Uh, absolute worst case scenario would be you take a two die, and and then then you're stuck on mighty blow because either just pushes or belt down or something. I don't hate just taking another strength four hit, but I would I would go lineman here and push up to the left. Base up some players on the ground. Not bad. Oh yeah, that, that would be a good, good foul right there. Okay. It's a bit of a funky position now. This Yeti has a chance of just going out right here. Because, <laughs> like, what's going to happen? Pest score is going to stand up. Someone's going to take a hit on the lineman. You don't even have to take the Claw Mighty Blow hit on the Yeti. Would be bad though. <laughs> you call in the Yeti strength strength buster. That's that's a big call out. I, I think it's just gonna get KO'd. A lot of a lot of basing of down players. Thing to remember though is as a team that has to protect the ball, North gonna be a little down in the strength department. Foul on the strength. KO, that's this big. Big, big, big. So Nurgle are down two players now.
Hmm. Stand up beast of Nurgle. Okay. And these two players are tied up pretty well. Nice, simple, claw mighty blow hit on the Yeti. Yeti's now on the ground, and that's hard to commit the Blitz to. Depending on how the rest of this goes. Move that lineman out of the way. Good, good. Um, I kind of really like Blitz with Pestigore to free up behind the ball, but then the ball just runs off, so that's actually not as good as I was thinking it was. Hey, Doug, it's going pretty well. Going pretty well. Really spicy pitch invasion. <laughs> it, you know, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Big guy armor, more like sadness. Uh, where, where does the Blitz go? Don't really think you want to Blitz this lineman. I like this hit. I like this hit. If you Blitz Cheney, you get another hit. Going for the sack? I, I like this. I like this a lot. Easy three plus into two dice sack, yeah. Then now what? <laughs> you can run over the agility piece, but then you're getting close to the palmer. I mean, I think you're in range of palm anyways. Yeah, a little bit. So you, you just bring the agility over, I think. You're already in range of it. Uh, over here, the Palmer's unsupported, though, so I guess that's, like, a point against that idea. I know, like, I, I definitely should have just called the 3-plus dodge there. I just, I don't know, it's one of the things, sometimes you turn your brain off to 3-pluses, when really, when you're playing them, like, if I were playing Chaos, I would take that sack every time. But it's just, uh, sometimes you forget, like, oh, yeah, the Nurgle can totally take that play. Oh. Didn't regen either. Yeah, that's, that's really sad. Because that was, what, a 3 plus, 2 plus, 2, 2 plus, 2 plus. Yeah, I'm, I'm not... I, I, I understand the play. I don't think I like it. Not because of the... Not because of the dodge, but because of the... Fact that then, even if you pick up the ball... You're still isolated from your team next to a Palmer and that sort of thing. I, I don't mind the sack just because it slows down the progression. You can't, you don't have a solid positioning with the ball, and then you have to take your actions in a way that doesn't optimize your hits. It optimizes for picking up the ball again. Yeah, I think I, I agree, Hendy. I, I think that if you're gonna go for it, you have to reroll. Just because this is the hardest dodge right here. Because that's a 3 plus, then a 2 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus. Blitzing the Palmer was also a good option. I agree. Being down the sure hands the entire game is rough, though, for the Nurgle. A 
And this is the only palm, right? Yeah. And especially when the Nurgle don't actually have a very good killer. Uh, like, I, I think just getting rid of the palm is important. Granted, Mighty Blow is about as effective as uh, Claw Mighty Blow here in this game. Tauntless hit coming in. Um, Paul not picked up. Cheney hit on a two die. Beat Snurgle end up just standing up. Did not break armor. One die pow. Yeah, Coconuts and Nurgle have been taking taking a beating. And this ball is pretty safe for the Norse. And you're you're almost looking at Well, I would say you would want to be a Snurgle hit, but the Beast of Nurgle is completely isolated. That's 4+. plus. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not sure where you would go here. I don't hate this. Don't hate this. Because then you're going to give an assist. Come right here, I think. Right, Just right here and give up on the ball. Picking up the beast in Urgle? Eh, it's okay. But that is that is a two die dauntless almost. Bring over this lineman and then the claw mighty blow gets hit. Um if you're, if you're gonna commit to this basing, I think you probably pick up this warrior as well. Can force more commitment of players. But you're already down four pieces. I don't even think that's a good play. Think you leave the wrestle on the ground, maybe? Okay. Freed up one player. I don't think you're going to be able to stop the Norse from scoring here. <laughs> they have too many players. Ergo are down. Three positionals. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's not even like the positionals being out isn't the worst part. It's just they need bodies to get the blocks right. Foul appearance, making a showing. Okay. Not a pile on. Foul appearance. Decent skill. 
Foul appearance? <laughs> Decent skill. It's a pretty cheeky foul appearance turn. There is a floor plus sack on the ball, but I don't think it's very good. I I love the emotes. What is that animated one? I like it. I like it. Yeah, uh, you know, just uh, get a couple of hits on the the paper armor. See if you get anything out of it. Best case scenario here, you're able to get force a score. But that's a pretty big best case. Well, actual best case is you take a 4-plus dodge into a pow that, for some reason, Gear Bear sidesteps to the sideline. The ball goes out, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Bounces in the correct direction and everything. But, force of score, I think, is the, the better play. Try to get your positionals back. It's a lot more consistent, too. Now you hit the Palmer, right? Hit on the Yeti. Just a stun, but stuns are good here. Beast of Nurgle now has a hit. Pro. Works like a charm. Palmer's on the ground. Um. Now what? Stand this up, you get hit. Just no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Like, you stand this up and the Palmer takes a hit. So you had to leave this on the ground. The Palmer will get out. I think you just uh, go go for the blitz now. Yep, yep. That is going to be surfed, though. That is going to be surfed. Because change is going to come in. Push, push. Someone else is going to come here. Bang. Oh, yeah, I already bl blitzed. I already forgot. Uh, you know, I've not done any research, but that checks out to me, Danger Said. Why are we getting a second assist here? In case of Cheney Dub Skull, eh, that's fair. It's one at 36, though. That's fair. Uh, Frenzy Trap. I was gonna say, like, <laughs> the, the Norse were the one with the frenzy. Um, 
Um, yeah. Piling on is a thing. Uh, the Nurgle really need to remove, like, <laughs> one Norseman with skills. Would be nice. Or, you know, any Norseman at this point. They're just getting punched around a lot at the moment. Uh, versus five removals? Uh, they, they've only had four removals. I'm pretty sure. I, I don't think there's been a region. I thought there was a three-man bench. Let's not, let's not get crazy. Let's not get crazy. <laughs> oh. Uh, that reminds me of, like, some sort of poll where the poll was, like, only 81% of people believe XYZ. It's like, only, eh? Yeah, I agree. I think the North should have been using their dirty player. They have a three-man bench. They have two dirty players. I agree. I agree. Like, you're already ahead. Keep snowballing. Once some rotters come back, or if the positionals succeed the KO rolls, it can get hard again real quick. Because despite how horrid this half has been, the Nurgle just need a solid eight-turn drive into, a, into overtime and keep grinding you down with their Mighty Blow. And Coconut is still in this game. That being said, uh, kind of just take a hit. Mighty Blow. Call it a day here. Hey, right, this would be my Blitz. And then you could stand up your Beast and if you wanted to. Just giving up extra hits, though. It's hard to force the score. Start running your beast. Your, not your beast. Your uh, chaos warrior. Nurgle warrior. One of those positions was damn it. Okay, then this should be your blitz. Or this should be your blitz. You just really want to use the mighty blow. It's not been paying off yet. However, it will eventually start removing some Norse. Yeah, so Beast of is going to take a hit. Um, I don't like the one die blitz, I'm gonna be honest. I I would have rather a two die blitz on just a regular Norseman than that. Cause like the thing you look for is just consistency as the Nurgle here. Like let's let's say you do get a pal. Okay. You're still just hitting with Mighty Blow. Whereas if you hit a Nor AV7 with Mighty Blow is just so much better. Especially if you're going to get two die versus the single die. Pro or not. Yeah, yeah, especially if you're 
taking one die hits on <laughs> one die hits like that. I think it would have been better to, just to blitz with this Nurgle warrior, Santa Claus, on on AV AV seven, and then you're not getting a re retaliation hit. Get off the jump up. That sort of thing. Yep. Another position while. Jump up failure, it's nice to see for the Nurgle. North should be unaccosted while they score though. Not taking a pills. Understandable. This should this should be really, really simple. It should just be the splits. I, that's what it feels like. A little bit, a little bit. I I don't I don't like that. I don't know why we're doing that. Yeah, North should be trying to snowball. Because they're so far ahead this drive, but once the KO rolls come in. That can be not the case after. And even if the KO rolls don't come in, right? Uh, like, worst case scenario, Nurgle are going to be down two. Like, they'll, they'll get the router back. Like, and routers are fine. In this game. Like, eh, they, ideally you want to get one of the three strength fours back. But Nurgle have a mighty blow. They have a Beast of Nurgle with Mighty Blow. Like it be okay. Just a couple lucky hits and they're back in the game. But I'd, I'd really, really like to see just hit the right dudes. That's the right dude. Reroll it. Yep, there we go. Ugh, nothing. And you can face that, that's fine. You can bring the pest score up. I'd rather just see a hit on a lineman still with a mighty blow. Because here's the thing about yetis and minotaurs and that sort of thing, right? They're just massive bait. They're like, oh, look at me, I'm AV8. But then you commit a guard trying to negate other assists, and then you use what could have been a two-die mighty blow on AV7 on, on, a, on a Nurgle. Well, on a big dude instead. And, like, sometimes it works. Sometimes you hit them once, you set it up, and you get massively rewarded. But there's also the times that that doesn't work. And, yeah, I don't agree with that foul. I do not agree. That was a zero assist foul. I, I wouldn't say tilted. I think Coconut's just, like, lost at how to play from behind a Nurgle. I don't think he's been in a behind position in uh, at least two seasons. Or like at least down numbers. Like this is, it's probably been a while. That's a regen it looks like. No, it's not a regen.
Like I, I will say, like the 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 blocks and the armor rolls have not been favorable for the the Nurgle, but also not taking the blocks needed to try to turn that around. Using the Beast Nurgle to take one dies, even with pro, you could pro two die and and instead go for a four die block and search for a pal. Uh, also, just standing up players, not respecting the fact that the more hits you give up, the faster you get removed. Especially while already down four players. Like, one mighty blow's out for the game. One mighty blow's KO'd. And this one is trapped. So now, honestly, I think you take an uphill somewhere with this this dude and run away. Uh, and then, then this Nurgle warrior is going to get fouled. And you're going to get fouled whether you stand up or not. But if you stand up, there's Mighty Blow and... Well, if you stand up, they still have to roll a pow, but that's two, three chances... With a blitz, there's more chances. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Turn eight. <laughs> ignore me. Ignore me. <laughs> I was I was looking at a turn seven for Christmas rejects. Ignore me. Yeah, I, I definitely think I think Gare Bear could have thrown more fouls. Like, e even if you just go until your dirty player's off. Because, like, there's two more positionals on the field. That would have been really nice to remove. Well, three more. Yeah, I, re I really think that uh, Figgy Pudding was used incorrectly this game. In my opinion. And Coconut really needs the KO rolls to come back. I I don't know what he's trying to uh, evaluate there. They could they could just be chatting. I don't know. I think he was deciding whether or not to uphill or not. I think he should have. Because uh, you just blitz uphill and uh, run away. Take, take a reroll on a dodge. Uh, KO roll number one. Nothing comes back. Um, it's not good. You take your line of scrimmage hits and call it eight. Yeah, worst case scenario is gonna be seven players. Uh it's okay, and you're gonna have another roll. You have another roll. Could be worse. This could be their half. <laughs> so, 
Got one more chance to stay in the game. Try to get a touchdown. Get over 10. Van Stinkle. Uh, really want to get a three die with the mighty blow if you can. Uh, you still blitz with something with a mighty blow. Okay, decent hit. Okay. Norse are going to be at 11 now. Okay, now you blitz the last one back into the team. No, blitz back into the Rotters. And you could convince me that you foul here, but like, you're still only going to bring the Norse to 11 on the next drive. Can't even go for a cheeky... SPP on the router. Okay. Try to bring the Norse to 11. <laughs> oh, immediate send off. That's, that's rough. See, one wake up, two wake ups. Yeah, th this is rough. This is rough. Eight players. Uh, two Chaos Warriors are out. Pestigore and a Beast of Nurgle. Yikes. And this half can turn around. This half can turn around. You can take take out a Norseman or two on the line of scrimmage with a, just some lucky hits. Get it almost even. But you're, you're still against a Cheney. You're against a Palmer. A strength up. A Yeti. That's been behaving very well. Yeah, the, the Nurgle need really good luck now. And I don't know, Richard. Uh, they, they might be. Double check real quick. Uh, they only have four losses out of, like, 30 games. So, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, how how is the thirty how is the thirty game Norse first season?
And the last time they lost was... Last playoffs, it looks like. <laughs> oh. uh, their first loss was in last season of playoffs, so they're definitely not a <laughs> first season Norse team. <laughs> oh. Nothing interesting happening. <laughs> oh, I'm stuck in an infinite rebel time loop. Now, I'm, I'm not even sure what you do as the Nurgle here. I, I don't like setting up for the Yeti hit. I do not like it. It's just super greedy. You're not as likely to remove it as other things. Okay, you got a stun, but I still didn't like it. <laughs> now move your killer back. At least it's a Yeti and not a Minotaur, so it doesn't have thick skull. Yeah, Chandy Surf. Or, you know... You could take the piece I can use rerolls and also do it. Does take double GFI though. No, it takes a single GFI and then one to get away. Yeah, you you have to be have been hitting the Norsemen with your mighty blows. But you know what? I, I wouldn't take your opinion in this in this spot exactly. Uh. Yeah, yeah, this is massive mistakes. Two strength fours on the strength four. Uh, you have a massive numbers lead. Just beat base everything. 11 against seven. Uh, yeah, I, I agree, Richard. Uh, Coconut's usually a really solid coach. But it's... Like I've said before, it's been quite a while since he's been on the back foot, like, numbers-wise. Like, at least this drastically, especially against Norse, who just have not been breaking armor. This is like, this is a really hard situation to get out of because you just, you're at a point where you have to succeed on 
three pluses like the rest of the game. Yeah, and I I think the the main thing is the AG4 going down on the the dodge that failed. Very rough. But also just standing up too many players to get hit back, getting three more KOs that you didn't have to. But also doing that and not taking the mighty blow hits on the line then. Just hyper fo focused on this Yeti. Like this Yeti doesn't matter. Like, the Yeti hurts, but if the Yeti keeps blitzing, that'll be a 2 plus that will fail. And then you just take a hit yourself. Like, when, whenever I'm playing with a wild animal and somebody sets up players to hit, hit the Minotaur while they're down players, that's great for me. Like, you're down players and you're using three or four activations to get enough assist to take a two die. And then if the two die fails, you're really screwed. Because then my wild animal gets to take the claw mighty blow hits on something awesome. I, I think even if he didn't go for the ball and just... I think the blitz was fine. Like, taking a three-plus with a wrestle for a sack. Like, that's fine. You know, just get the ball on the ground and that's a lot of pressure. You don't have to pick up the ball. They're not elves. They're they're just Norse. They've got a sure hand, but they're still just Norse. No agility anywhere. Passing plays are non-existent in your, in your stink. Get the ball on the ground and wait a turn and then go from there. I just think there was a lot of rush when you didn't have to rush. Because the worst case scenario from that position was the Norse runner takes a 3 plus dodge with dodge, takes a 9 plus pickup, runs over and hands it to the Berserker, and he runs it in for a touchdown. And then you get three line of scrimmage hits, a blitz, KO rolls. And I just think that's, that's a great situation to be in. Whereas taking a 3-plus dodge into, like, 4 2-plus dodges into a sure hand where you isolate your isolate your agility piece to where a Palmer can get two frenzy hits. Like, I, don't, I don't know. I just I just think that the, the game plan wasn't thought out on that turn. It just feels a lot like a... Oh shit, I'm in a horrible situation this turn, or I'm in a great position this turn, and not how do I convert this position into a game winning position? Or what's the game winning play? Because, like, if all those dodges worked through tackle, uh, it, it would have it would have been great. You know, you'd have the ball, you'd be like, what? This is not a blodge piece, right? No. But, you, you know, you have a chance that you could just chuck the ball down the pitch and run after it. But the Norths are faster than you, so that doesn't do anything. Uh, you wouldn't be able to get the ball back to anyone else on your team. So I, you just kind of be isolated anyways. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, th I think the I think the wrestle blitz itself was great. I you know like that's just a three plus blitz. You know whatever. Three plus into a two die. And it you know uh, removals could have been coming for the Nurgle, but they've been down players uh, since the pitch invasion, essentially. And I just don't think. Uh, a lot of the Mighty Blow is used in the right spot.
And I don't I don't foresee a score outside of just a massive potato. But like this this is the point of the game where you have to start taking up those. You have to start taking three plus dodges. You have to do something. You can't just uh and this this is something you see in a lot of a lot of uh chaos players as well, is they just Forget that if you're super behind, you have to start doing what people do against you. You have to start taking those one dice, those red dice, that get you position, not removals. Uh, like, this right here, this should have been a blitz. This should have been a blitz and a runaway. And then you just kind of, like, hope that whatever blitz comes after you fails. Because you need something to fail. Okay, there's a KO. Getting some sort of pressure back. Now you had to hit this. Get the guard here. Um. I I think he sees how good his Beast of Nurgle is. And assumes that all other big guys are just as good. Which is just not the case. Like, yeah, you can give the Yeti a little bit of respect, but... The Yeti is just... Worse than the Palmer. Yeah, exactly. If you if you if you remove the AV sevens, then the the Yeti is just not going to be able to do anything. Yeti and the Palmer been allowed to go three just because of the AV seven lineman with guard. The Ulf, that sort of thing. Ah, uh, Nurgle can attempt to break through the next turn, and you just kind of got to hope that uh, <laughs> your ball carrier stays standing. It's like your play. And let's not, and let's be fair, K rolls could have been way more generous. Uh, like out of five players on two KO rolls. Two came back, one of which was a positional, one of which was a rotter. Uh, you know, Norse have been getting, could have been taking more damage, but you can't, you can't have that every game, you know. And don't get me wrong, this Nurgle team has been having games where they're not winning on pure attrition. They've definitely had some really solid games. Uh, it's just uh, playing Nurgle from behind is, you know, uh, depressing. <laughs> Not easy. Okay. 
Here, here's what I'm saying, right? Take a rotter hit here with Russell. Hope for a knockdown. Blitz through here and run up. And then deal with the other players somehow. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. It's actually, it's not a horrible. It's not horrible. You do have to survive like a frenzy hit. Yeah, I, I don't either. Especially when you're this ahead. Just, just accept the knockdown. Okay, basing up the frenzy palm. I like that. I, I do think clearing the ball would have been better. I don't. I don't hate that. Okay, you can't take that hit now. Cannot take the mighty blow hit. Do not take the mighty blow hit. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Gotta move the ball. Gotta move the ball. What you actually do... I think you take a one die here to get the lineman here, and you take a hit on the lineman, then you blitz through. This is also fine, though. It's a little sad. Whereas if you cleared up the lineman with some hits, you could have gotten a push, and a dodge would have been, would have been just a 3-plus out. I think... I'm not a fan of this. Not a fan of this. Because that's now on the ball. So here, here's kind of my philosophy with uh, getting ball cleared up on like agility three teams. If you need to take a two plus to free up the ball, uh, make make it a one die block, especially if a push is enough. I just think that there was worst worst case, you know, you take this one die, try to get one of the pals, or even pushes are fine because then you have another follow up hit on two die. And then you can blitz through, and you had a you had a way out and get down the pitch because you, you just have to do that. You're so so down on players, you have to make a break. You have to get lucky. You have to survive some hits, and just playing playing the two die game doesn't doesn't work at this point. It, it's not fast enough. You only have one mighty blow. You, you don't have the strength. You don't have the guard. Like here we're going to see just frenzy hit. Uh, if, if you're still standing though. Uh, yeah. This is still a chance of scoring. You, you take the uphill now as the Norse. Uh, I think we have a we have a chain bush. So you push this here. Take this push. Push this here. And then what? Take this 
punch with the rotter. And then you blitz through here and go away. Yeah, I, I think you should have rerolled. Because this this should be the hit. This should be the hit. You should get a chain push here. Like this this should be a way to escape. This is another way to escape, just right here. Yeah, this is also fine. This is also fine. I would have preferred a chain push play, but I'm a sucker for a good chain push. And that's annoying, but you, you gotta take it. You gotta take it. Follow and break free. Three plus. Three plus. It's fine. Reroll it. It's, it's okay. If you fail on the dodge, you did your best. You know what? That was one of like the two outs right there. Was that dodge out play or the chain push play so like if you lose on that you know none of the other plays that we were looking at we're gonna do it either Uh, if the ball doesn't get picked up, there's still a chance, though. <laughs> Just have to rely on uh, strength for Pestigore some more. All right, and this is this is looking a lot like game here. It's very improbable that the Nurgle can get the ball back in a position like this. But I, I've seen crazier. I've seen crazier. I still remember... I think it was like my second college game. I was Chaos Against Orcs. Where the Orcs did just like... They walked through a screen to sack the ball... I had a I had like an elf screen and they just walked through it and sacked the ball in a one die. I just messaged my mentor like, does this happen a lot? I thought I was well defended. It's like, no, that's really unlucky. Yeah, this is looking like it's going to be not into overtime. Which means that I'll be able to uh, get some lunch and take a nap. I was going to do that anyway, spoiler warning. Okay, I like running the rotter up, try to get a scoring threat. They they move five, so you would need to go one more to be in scoring position. But that should be good enough for its purposes right this moment. It's turn 14, not 15. Uh, and now you YOLO it, right? Six plus with the reroll, blitz on red dice. Oh, that feels awful. I mean, you can stand up the the Nurgle Warrior and blitz on one one die. Uh, yeah, that that is some that is some AV seven armor right there, holding up like a champ. Yep, 
just walk the ball. I like that. Hit the mighty blow. I like that. Foul appearance is a skill. Huh? The one die is okay. And I think this ball is pretty safe. Like what op what options are there? Like Broder has to do a sick play to get the ball down. Then the mighty blow pest gore has to pick it up and lob it down the field. First of all, you should move this this rotter one square. Very first thing you should do, move the rotter one square. The next thing you should do, um, Roll a lot of sixes. I mean, yeah, but my my reasoning is if you move the rotter, like he's in scoring position. Yep, you had to take that reroll to have a chance. Now go base the runner. Put your rotter in scoring position. Yeah, okay. Almost glory, not quite. That is indeed game. The Nurgle cannot score. The only way they could score is if the Norse, for some reason, gave them a chain push. Just ran up with a bunch of players. <laughs> you, you can lose in peace. Ah, uh, the same same region. Ding. Oh yeah, no problems. No problems is it's fine. You, and you know, Coconut got to round sixteen of playoffs. That's nothing to be sad about. Admirable performance. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's a level on an oath. That's gonna be block. You could also go mighty blow if you wanted, level it faster, but it also just dies faster that way. Uh, could be guard. Could be guard. Yeah, I can. I can see guard.
What the doors really need is uh, another berserker. Wonder do they have the cash for it? Some cheeky red dice. Then I think you're fine to blitz something here. Or you can just leave your pieces on the ground, call it a day. And that is a two dime. Two nine, no, a two zero victory for the Norse. I'm, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I'm so greedy. I would have set up a three die, three die for the Yeti. Uh, I would have taken it every day of the week. He's got block. He'd be fine. Really good uh, MVP, though. Twenty to seven. 60 to 40, and just a massive difference in the amount of amount of removals. 5 SPP game feels really bad. Uh, foul appearance, bang average. Really good injury rolls for the Norse. Decent armor, too. Yeah, commiserations. It's rough to watch. 66% armor. Um, pretty, pretty average. And... Really good, actually. That's... 11 skulls when both downs are great for Norse because they all have block. I don't think Norse were forced into a skull once, were they? Oh, well, they were on uh, Cheney, actually. Well, yeah, but th these are together. These are together. Because everything should... Like, these two should add up to this, and these two should add up to this. So, it's actually a little bit good for, really good for the Norse, actually. So, like, 42, 44, 31 is... Good block dice. These block dice were pretty average. A little, like, just a little low on pals, but not, not too bad. Uh... I, it, it, it was a lot of positioning, and you took a lot of hits on the Yeti instead of using your Mighty Blow on Lineman the first half. Like, it was a, it was a position you could have came back from. I, I, I think you should take some time, be pissed, and take another look at it, because I, I think there were a lot of things you could have done different. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the turn eight foul that was, like, an immediate send-off, that didn't help. Like, it, there was there was some misfortune, like, don't get me wrong, like, the Norseman didn't break. Uh, the Norseman didn't break, you had a really bad, like, oh, I failed to dodge, my players removed for the rest of the game, you know, your agility four piece, that's awful. Pitch, pitch invasion screwed you over a lot, but there was still stuff you could have come, come and done. Yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't a very advantageous foul. Like best case scenario, you tr like you get a lineman off and the Norse come in with eleven in the next drive, but that doesn't really help your goal of getting to overtime with as many players as possible. But also the KO rules were quite shit. 
the KO rules were awful. I think that if you had a chance of getting eleven players back on the field, it would have been would have been manageable. Yeah, yeah the KOs were awful. But I, I don't think it was as dire after losing the ball carriers it looked. Um and you didn't get removals, but you were also taking like one dies on a Yeti. KOs definitely sealed it. Like, don't get me wrong. But there were that you were not I don't think you were playing to the right outs. I think you gave the Yeti way too much respect. But that will be it for me. I need to do some other stuff tonight. Need to take a look at something. Let's see, is there anybody else streaming at the moment? New Revelers. Ah, uh, Nexus is streaming. We'll we'll raid Nexus. Alright, uh, I'm gonna start up this raid. Thank you all for watching. You, you still made it to round of 16, Coconut. I hope you don't feel too bad about it. Take your little blood bowl break. Get you something to con console yourself. Yeah. I hope you all have a good one.